Welcome to episode number 13 of 30 Days of Persuasion Plays with me, Paul Massetta. Remember, if you're enjoying these videos, if you're learning something, or if you're just learning a new way to apply something that you already may have known, like the videos, leave a comment, let me know what you think, and make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel so that you get notified when I release new videos and when I release the Persuasion Playbook. It's coming very soon, and it's gonna include every technique that I'm sharing here, along with 71 additional tactics that you can use to gain compliance from other people. Today's lesson, don't expect anyone to listen to you until you've created rapport with them. Don't expect anyone to listen to you until you've created rapport with them. Very, very important lesson here because all too many times I see people trying to persuade other people, but they haven't put in the time, the money, the energy, the resources needed to create the connection that is needed with that person in order for that person to say yes to them. So what I want you to imagine are two different scenarios. Scenario number one is your best friend, your closest friend, the person that you confide everything in, the person that's gonna baptize your kids, be your best man at your wedding or your maid of honor, someone that's like a sister or a brother to you, someone that's very, very close to you. They call you up and they tell you that they need to borrow $500, that something happened and they came up short this month and they gotta pay their rent and they need to borrow $500. And I want you to think, assuming that you have the money, that you can lend it to them, I want you to think of what you would do in that situation. How would you react in that situation? If you have the money and you're not a cold-hearted, evil soul, the chances are very high that you're gonna lend that person the money, right? This is someone that's very close to you, they're in a jam, they need your help, you're gonna do it for them. Versus someone that you just met a week ago, maybe it's a coworker, so somebody new comes on the job, you know them for about a week, you've said a hello and goodbye to them, you've had maybe a total of a 25 minute conversation with them if you add up all the interactions, that's how much of a conversation you've had with this person. They come to you and they go, you know, my first paycheck came up short and I thought that I was gonna be getting paid $1,250, but I only got $750 and I'm gonna have a problem paying my rent this month. Do you think you could lend me the $500? Now I want you to think about how you would react to that person. So unless you're a Mother Teresa type of person that's out to save the world, chances are you're gonna think very long and hard about whether or not you wanna give that person the money and chances are you probably ain't gonna give them that money, especially if you're from where I grew up, Brooklyn or Staten Island, where people have a tendency to borrow money and not pay it back, you're gonna think long and hard before you give away that money. And so really the only difference between those two people is that you have rapport with one and you don't have rapport with the other one. It's that simple. Yes, you can tally up all the years of friendship, all the things that they've done for you, all the experiences that you've had together, blah, blah, blah. But what that all boils down to is rapport. So rapport is essential when trying to influence and persuade other people. The bottom line is they're not gonna really listen to you I mean, they may have their ears open where they hear what's going on. I mean, everyone can hear what's going on, but they're not gonna actually listen to you unless you create rapport with them. So you have to stop assuming that what you have to offer is so important that they'd be doing you a favor by complying with you and instead focus on the reality. And the reality is that they're not gonna listen to you until you create rapport with them. So first, tip in creating rapport is give people the upper hand. And what I mean by that is this, which we'll cover in another video, but people make rapid subconscious decisions about you the moment that they meet you. They say, don't judge a book by its cover. I got news for you. You're judging a book by its cover. I'm judging a book by its cover. Everybody's doing it. 
It's naturally hardwired into us to subliminally judge people within the first five to seven seconds of meeting them. That's just the reality. So oftentimes when that happens, the person makes a bad judgment about you. So here's what I mean by that. Oftentimes when, when a person makes that rapid subconscious decision, they're trying to place you into a category. And the category is basically, are you gonna add to their resources or are you gonna take away from their resources? Are you a threat to them? And I got news for you. A lot of the time, the majority of the time, you go into the threat category when somebody first meets you. And so when that happens, the person will start doing things in a defensive manner. Sometimes it's subtle, sometimes it's a little bit more aggressive, but they may say things, like they may, they may act arrogant, they may act cocky, they may talk about accomplishments that they have, they may talk about things that they have in their life that maybe are better than yours. And so what I tell people is when people start to do that, if your ultimate goal is to influence or persuade them, let them do it. Let them do it. Let them, let them toot their own horn. Let them talk about how much money they make per year. Let them talk about all the vacations they go on. Let them talk about all these wonderful accomplishments that they've made in the company before you came along. Let them talk about that stuff because I got news for you. The majority of other people aren't giving them an opportunity to actually talk about that stuff. They're mentally tuning out. But if you sit there and give them that attention and let them have the upper hand instead of trying to show them up and show them why you're as equally as successful as they are, you have equally as much money as they do or equally as good of, as, of an education as they do, when you're trying to one-up somebody constantly all that happens is you start winding, you get, you wind up getting into this defense fight where you're, you're trying to one up each other constantly. Who's better? Who's done more? Who deserves to have more? And what I tell people, which I said in an earlier video, is stop focusing on being right and start focusing on being persuasive. And this, this is not about kissing anybody's ass or kissing up to them or buttering them up. It's not about that. It's about the fact that when people first meet you and in order to protect themselves, they will go into a defensive mode and they may say or do things that try to make them appear superior to you. Let them enjoy that moment. Let them have that, their 15 minutes of fame. Give them that upper hand temporarily to make them feel good so that you can create rapport with them. Second thing is listen to them. Listen to what they have to say. When somebody sits down, no matter how gut-wrenching or annoying or how much of a turnoff it may be to hear somebody pat, them on, pat themselves on the back for 20 minutes, listen to them. And one of the most effective ways to listen to somebody and to show somebody that you're actually interested in what they're saying is to ask them questions about what they're saying. Ask them who, what, when, where, and why, how they feel about something. What they felt was the most important thing that they had to do to finish school, to get that high level education that they're talking about. Who they needed to talk to in order to get that career advancement. How they needed to carry themselves, whatever. Ask them questions to get them to further articulate and talk about these accomplishments or these things that they're doing when they're in this mode of trying to act superior to you. And then the last thing is to match and mirror. I talk about this all the time. One of the most effective ways to create rapport with someone is just to simply mirror and match their verbal language and their body language. So pick up on verbal cues or verbal terms that they're using and then use those same terms back with them and also utilize matching and mirroring. So you want to do exactly what they are doing with their body with your body. So if you're both sitting at a table and they're leaning in like this, you want to lean in. If they're kind of pushed back like this, you want to push back. If they got their hands on the table like this, you want to have your hands on the table. If they put their right hand up like this, you want to put your left hand up because that's what the image would look like if they were staring in the mirror. These are the easiest ways to create rapport with somebody that you have never met before. So again, number one, give them the upper hand. 
Number two, listen and ask questions while you're giving them the upper hand. And number three is to agree with them, match and mirror their verbal language and their nonverbal language. Remember, if you like this video, if you learned something, make sure to like it, leave a comment, and subscribe.